Hello fellow pen lovers and stationery enthusiasts, it's Christy here, Snarky Wordsworth over on Instagram and Reddit, and today I have another unboxing for everybody out there. Uh, so this item came from Endless Pens Big Black Friday VIP sale, uh, and I'm really excited about one of the items in here. It's been on my wanted fountain pens list for ages. I just kept on getting sort of distracted by other pens or whatever, but I'm super glad that I held off because I managed to get this for an incredible price. Really excited about that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and open this guy up and hopefully you will enjoy. Okay, so let's do the one ink I picked up first, and this is Robert Oster's Muddy Bucket. So I am really getting into these sort of yellowy browns lately, and I'm really excited to try this one out. It's been on my list again for a while, but very excited to give it a try. Uh -huh. Now, this is the item I was talking about. This is what I've been looking forward to trying. And if you're familiar with the packaging, you probably already know what it is. Or if you've read the title for this video, who am I kidding? Ta-da! Ooh, I'm so excited. Okay, hold on one second. Let me get the box out of the way. Here it is, the Traveler's Company Brass Fountain Pen. I really love brass pens, like a whole, whole lot. And I'd been wanting this one. I just, I don't know, I just never picked it up. I, like I said, kept getting distracted by like other pens and this just stayed on my list and just kept getting transferred over and over and over again. But it's finally here and it's mine. I got this thing for somewhere around 30 something dollars with all of the different discounts. See, in the box, the packaging on Traveler's Notebook stuff is always super, super efficient and cleverly done. So you can see the little display actually houses both the pen and its little ink cartridge. It has the little slip for the clip. And it gives you the instructions to change the ink color, all of the different info. look I love pocket pens one you guys all know that but I really do love brass pens and I'll bring out my Caveco brass just so you can sort of see comparatively um how they size up and whatnot but oh I love it let's see can you see it Traveler's Company made in Japan and of course like the finial has the little um I guess like a cord or lanyard hook. Um, I'm not doing that, but if you wanted to, you absolutely could. Um, it's got the clip that's on there too. It's just sort of like a snap. Ooh, ooh it's very satisfying snap too. Right? I love it. Um, and then you just post. And oh, oh, it's got a nice weight to it. It's definitely, it feels much lighter than my Caveco brass, but I'm not sure about that. So I'll double check on the specs in a moment, but it does feel a little bit lighter, but it feels really well balanced once it's posted. Um, a lot of times I can write even with pocket pens unposted. I don't think that I could write with this one unposted and I have very small hands compared to a lot of people. So, um, 
just extra information if you also tend to write with tiny pens unposted. This one's this one's a little rough. I could probably do it, but it would not be comfortable and certainly not for like long letters or whatnot. But let's take a look at the nib. So it's got Traveler's Company right on there. And then it does say that this is a fine. Uh, and I'm actually excited about having it in a fine instead of an extra fine, just because um, I know I've had some trouble with certain inks that I really, really like in my Caveco Brassport, which is an extra fine, and that's not even a Japanese pen. So goodness knows um, how challenging it would be to find pen inks that are wet enough for this guy, but I don't know. So like I said, um, give me a moment and we will ink this guy up and then try it out. Yeah, how? And it does come with one uh, international short cartridge. But yeah, there she is. Oh, she's just awesome. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so you can see she is a really beautiful pen, like really, really gorgeous. And I can't wait to see her kind of patina up. But now I want to go ahead and uh, ink her up. And then I'm going to give you some of the specs and sort of give a little bit comparison between this and the Caveco Brass. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I am back and now I have some stats for you. So of course, the Traveler's Company fountain pen is made of brass. It is about 102.2 millimeters when it's closed, and then it's about 142.8 millimeters once it's been posted. Um, all in all, uh, it weighs about 27 grams, and this one does use the standard short international cartridges. Uh, if those stats sounded vaguely familiar, it is because they are almost the same as the stats that you get for the Caveco Brass Sport. Caveco Brass Sport, also made of brass, it is about 108 millimeters, so it's a bit longer when it's closed and you can see the main difference would be that little um, lanyard clip at the end uh, but you can see that uh, there that it is definitely a little tiny bit shorter um, the Caveco brass is also 134 millimeters once it's posted so not quite as long and we'll do that in just a second uh, the big difference though comes in the weight the Caveco Brass is about 48 grams altogether. So if you've ever tried the Caveco Brass and felt like, oh, this is a little bit too heavy to be comfortable in my hand, then the Traveler's Notebook Fountain, or sorry, the Traveler's Company Fountain Pen might be a little bit easier to carry because it does have like a significant uh weight difference between the two. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the Traveler's Company pen, definitely significantly lighter and um, a little tiny bit smaller when it's closed, but when they're posted, you can see the Caveco uh, Brass Sport is definitely shorter. It's not like a huge difference, but it is um, about eight millimeters of difference. So, you know, a centimeter is not totally insignificant if you have small hands, especially. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, the Traveler's Company fountain pen is lighter and tiny bit longer, whereas the Caveco Brass Sport is a tiny bit shorter and definitely heavier once posted. So, you know, those are just sort of things to think about when you're looking at uh, whether or not you want one or the other, uh, or maybe you'll just be like me and you'll want all of the pocket brass pens. Who knows? Um, I definitely have some others on my list, but, you know, now I can sort of take a breath and maybe just really enjoy the two that I have right now. But I do, like I said, have a couple of others on my list that I've definitely been coveting for quite some time. So as mentioned, the Traveler's Company fountain pen does uh, take the standard international short cartridges, uh, but I didn't have any on hand that I was really excited to use in this pen. Uh, I actually already knew what color I wanted, so I just chose to take one of my empty cartridges and syringe fill it, and I syringe filled it with ba -ba -ba, Ferris Will Press's Goose Poupon. I am really in this sort of 
obsession, fascination with the sort of gold brown inks right now, like I mentioned with um, Muddy Bucket. And I just really wanted to fill this one with this because I do think it's like a really good match. Just, you know, if you're really into matchy matchy with with metal pens, I'm not super into matchy matchy, but I just thought it was like a nice color combo for one. And then I also just wanted to see how it would handle being in a Japanese fine nib. Uh, I know I have had some trouble with my extra fine Caveco brass nib in the past as far as like drier inks go. So I just thought I'd give it a shot and see what happens. But yes, very excited about this. Okay, so I am all ready to do a quick little writing sample just so you can kind of get an idea of how fine this particular fine nib is. It is a Japanese fine, so I'm expecting it to be a pretty slim line, but we shall see. So you can see that the line is quite fine, but it was very, very smooth, actually smoother than I was expecting. Um, and it's really, really very comfortable uh, to hold in the hand while writing. Like for a pocket pen, it's just very, very easy to use. You know, I, I don't think even if you have a much larger hand that this would be a pen that would be uncomfortable even for longer writing sessions. I can already tell that it fits my hand very well. So small, small handed pen lovers, this is a really, really comfortable size uh, with a really good balance, at least with the way that I hold my pen. But I do think you can see there's like a fair amount of um, pen that doesn't rest on my hand and it doesn't feel heavy at all. Um, it doesn't feel back heavy. It just, it's just really, really nicely done. Sorry, it's sort of blurring out there. Um, so yeah, I definitely can think, I definitely would think that someone even with a larger hand would be able to hold this comfortably and write for a long time. Um, I really do love the way that it lays ink down. Um, it didn't feel scratchy at all. I wasn't even getting an insane amount of feedback, certainly nothing compared to like a sailor pen, just, just a really nice, comfortable writing experience. Um, so yeah, if you like a fine line, um, and you do still like, because you can still see, and this is, of course, it's going to depend on the kind of ink that you're using, but you can still see even with that fine nib, you know, a lot of shading going on with this ink. And, you know, once you deal with like Japanese fines, sometimes it's hard to see those kinds of characteristics within the ink with such a fine line. So yeah, really excited about this. Really, really excited. Um, so yeah, if you are thinking about getting a pocket brass pen and you're a little bit worried about weight, I definitely, I definitely would recommend this one. I do believe that on the Traveler's Company website, it MSRPs out at like $69 or something. But like I mentioned on the sale that I found mine at, I got it for less than 40. It was somewhere around 35 or so. So you can definitely, definitely find really good deals on it. Um, and not just at Endless Pens, but any number of the reputable companies that uh, a lot of us will usually shop at. So yeah, keep your eye out for it. Definitely highly recommended. Uh, and you can, you can see from here, it does do a really, really great job and it's a really comfortable pen. Okay, so if this video was at all interesting, entertaining, or useful to you, please do consider hitting that like button or potentially even clicking subscribe. 
As always, thank you so, so much for being with me. Uh, if you happen to have any questions or concerns about this particular pen, please do consider putting those in the comments. I will try and get back to you as quickly as possible. Or if you happen to just want to strike up a conversation, I love talking about pens. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do, so don't be shy. Um, so with that, if you are still with me at the end of this video, you are everything that is awesome. And hopefully I will see you next time. Bye-bye.